You talked a little bit about time-restricted feeding. Um, next question, I think, um, will build on that, which is from Sam Reyes. Um, the question is, has there been any evidence suggesting one method of fasting is, is more beneficial than, than others? Right. I think that's a really good it's question. It's a very broad question. It's a very broad question, but it sort of gives me a chance to describe some of the different types of fasting, which I kind of touched on already. But, you know, you hear, you hear in like popular culture, you hear everyone say intermittent fasting. Right. And intermittent fasting becomes this like blanket term for yeah. all things fasting. Yeah, like Walter Longo like doesn't like that term. Right. It's, it's just so general. Right. Dr. Walter Longo uh, from USC, who is a, a really a, a, an expert, he does a lot of research on fasting. Um, he has mentioned how, you know, intermittent fasting can be considered in humans fasting up to about, you know, 24 hours. And then prolonged fasting happens when you get into like the 48 hour mark, so two days or, or longer. Um, and then of course there's time restricted eating, which has a um, intermittent fasting component to it, but it also has that circadian biology component to it. Right. You want to eat within the time when your metabolism is optimal. And when you're not eating, you're obviously fasting. And, and so, you know, people end up doing up to 16 hour um, fasting periods. So if they're eating within an eight hour window, they're fasting for 16 hours. Which and that's of course, time colloquially is called 16-8. It, it, 16 yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so, that, so that would also be time restricted eating. That's something that you're doing on a daily basis. Um, and so, as I had already mentioned with the time restricted eating, you know, there's, you get, you get the benefits of the fasting part. So you're fasting for 16 hours. Um, part of the benefits, you know, with that are things like you do start to have repair processes that are um, activated in, in order to repair damage, whether it's damage to your DNA or, you know, damage to proteins or just um, damage, like I mentioned, mitochondria or just pieces of, you know, dead cells floating around. Mm -hmm. That stuff is, is cleared away and repaired during a fasting state. Um, so you get that with the intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating, which has a fasting component. In addition, the time-restricted eating, you have the, the, the benefits, and this has been shown by uh, Dr. Sachin Panda, Ruth Patterson, others, um, that you're eating within your, your circadian biology in terms of when your metabolism is its most optimal. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to, you know, for example, if you, if you eat your first you know, bite of food at 8 a.m. in the morning, and then you're eating dinner at 8.30 or 9, you're, at, at, you know, you're basically, you've already gone past 12 hours, sure. your metabolism at 8.30 or 9 isn't going to be very good. And so, and what may end up happening is you're not going to be as insulin sensitive, so your blood glucose levels are going to be higher, your fasting blood glucose is going to be higher, your fatty acid metabolism is not as good, so you're going to start to store fatty acids in adipose tissue rather than using them as energy. So you'll start to like gain more fat mass, which is, has all sorts of problems. Um, in addition to that, you may also, uh, your body, because you have been going, it's, it's been like over a 12 hour mark, when you eat that food in the evening, you may be resetting the clock and your body thinks it's, it's resetting the start time of metabolism. So the whole time you're sleeping is when your metabolism is at its best and then you wake up in the morning and it's completely misaligned. So everything is misaligned mm -hmm. in terms of your metabolism. And so that, that means that you're always gonna have higher blood glucose levels, your, your, your fatty acids are gonna be more likely to be stored in adipose tissue rather than used as energy. So that misalignment. So that's uh, the benefit for time-restricted eating or time-restricted feeding as it's called with animal studies. Um, and then, as you mentioned, Dr. Walter Longo's research, he does a lot of research on what's called prolonged fasting, um, typically 48 hours or longer. Um, again, as you get into that, you may want to do that under medical supervision. Now, he has done a lot of research in animals showing that, um, you know, if, if you do a prolonged fast, not only do you have this autophagy start to act, activate, which we talked about, um, as the fast becomes more prolonged, uh, you actually start to get the clearing away of, of cells, damaged cells, seems to be preferentially damaged cells that are cleared away. Um, and in the process of that happening, you actually activate stem cells and sort of replenish those damaged cells with new mm. healthy young cells. Wow. Now he's shown this in animals where literally during the fasting period, organs will shrink. And then during the refeeding period, which we'll talk about a little bit later, they regrow. So you're basically getting rid of the damaged cells, mostly it seems, and then you're replenishing them with healthy new young cells and they're regrowing. Now that's all been done in animal studies. Um, he has some preliminary evidence in humans where it seems as though uh, looking at various markers of like stem cell activation, for example, that does seem to be happening. 
Um, but he's got some ongoing studies where they're going to look at that in much more detail. So, um, you know, that's a benefit of the prolonged fasting, which you don't really get from a shorter fast. Right. Because you need to really have a stronger stress. You have to have your IGF-1 levels really dip down. That takes time. Um, and I think in their product, Prolon, which, you know, we won't get too much into, but it's, it has some calories per day, but that's like a five-day regimen. So are you really looking at kind of five days to get most of those benefits you discussed? So Prolon is um, is uh, th that's the name for their fasting mimicking diet, right. which uh, was developed by Dr. Walter Longo, and it's a very specific has a very specific um, macronutrient content, so a specific amount of fat and protein and carbohydrates, yep. and a total caloric cap. So you know I think that like the first day it's up to a thousand calories, and then the second to the fifth day you're getting a little bit a little over 700 calories a day. Right. Um, and he has shown, again, he's shown in animal studies the same benefits with the organ shrinking and then regrowing. Yep. And then he's done some clinical studies in humans showing um, a variety of metabolic benefits. You're getting, you know, of course, improved glucose uh, levels, insulin sensitivity. Um, he shows IGF-1 does go down. Um, and, 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 you know, cholesterol, like there's benefits with your cholesterol, metabolism, things like that. Right. So, um, so that's also another sort of part of fasting. Where so the same idea of a, of a prolonged fast that you mentioned where you're getting the autophagy and the stem cell production over a you know, multiple day fast, except in his case, bring low calories into the equation ostensibly to probably make it just easier for people to stick with than, it, a, than a water only fast. Definitely seems like it's easier for people to, to stick with uh, or at least try out. You know, in animals, he has shown that you do get a lot of the same benefits as a, as a water fast. but. You have to remember, you know, animals have a much faster metabolism sure, than humans. Right. And in fact, if you if, if you fast a, a mouse, a rodent, for forty eight hours, they lose twenty percent of their body weight. Wow. A human loses maybe two yeah, percent. I can tell you from experience that doesn't happen for <laughs> no. me. I've tried, <laughs> no. but no. So um, the question then becomes, well, you know, how much of the organ shrinking, regrowing sure. you get with just a fasting mimicking for five days versus, you know, actually not eating or, you know, so the, there's lots of little nuances that aren't quite figured out yet, yep. but um, certainly there are benefits and he's shown that in humans. So, so just to wrap up the question, um, it sounds like, you know, the question is, is a fasting type more beneficial than other? It sounds like it's, there are different instruments, different tools for different outcomes. And, you know, um, maybe combining some of these modalities, maybe doing, you know, time-restricted feeding, circadian more regularly, and then periodically for, to kind of get those cleansing benefits, m metabolic cleansing, you do maybe a longer one if, if, again, if your doctor says it's okay and you're cleared for it, could that be a good sort of sequencing for people? Yeah, and I, I think that's, that's a good summary, and I think I should probably also mention um, another benefit that comes from the, the, both intermittent fasting and certainly prolonged fasting is your body shifts from um, glucose metabolism, metabolizing carbohydrates, to fatty acid metabolism. Um, ketones. And, and you, just you, get the, you get the production of ketone bodies like beta-hydroxybutyrate, which has in and of itself been shown by people like Dr. Eric Verdin uh, to be uh, anti-aging in a sense, where wow. they're it's a signaling molecule that's been shown to activate gene genetic pathways in the body that are known to delay age-related diseases that are known to help increase repair processes. It's been shown to reduce um, damage that's generated by your mitochondria, which are you know basically what's generating most of the energy inside of your cells. But that whole process of generating energy, what we know as known as metabolism. Um, generates a lot of you know very harmful reactive byproducts and beta hydroxybutyrate lowers that so it kind of makes your mitochondria more efficient got so it that's another benefit with the inter intermittent fasting and uh, certainly the prolonged fasting cool